Welcome back, I'm Streaky. Today I'm going to show you a basic vocal chain that you can use on your vocals in your mixes when you're recording. We're going to look at how you can get from this Feeling me baby Give it up All the way to this Feeling me baby Give it up Doing it all with Logic stock plugins. Okay, let's get stuck in. Hold tight, here we go. So here we are inside of Logic. Now I'm gonna show you a basic vocal chain. You're gonna be able to download this. There is a link below, but watch all the way through because I'll tell you why, how, and when to do all the different settings that are in that template. So let's get right to it and listen to the dry vocal that I've downloaded earlier today from Splice. If you wanna download it, then you can see what the track file name is here. So um, yeah, let's listen how that sounds when it is bone dry. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. So what I want to do is I'm listening to this as it's playing and thinking, what is the problems with this? What do I need to do to uh, make this better before we put any processing on? So I can hear, if you listen, it's got a little bit of spill from the track in the background after she stops singing. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. So we can hear that noise that's going on there, a bit of lip smacking. Now we could uh, chop this up, strip the silence with it, but today I'm going to show you how to do it with a gate going across, old school styly. Let's grab a gate. So in dynamics and uh, noise gate stereo. What we want to do is, first of all, we need to get the gate to open and close as the vocal comes in. You can see it opens and closes here. So this is where you can use it to kind of check out your settings to see exactly when it's closing. But a lot of the times I like to just use my ears just so that I can hear exactly what's going on, whether it's cutting the vocal too short or, to, or at the end. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. So I can hear it needs a little bit of attack. Um, let's just get the hold time up a little bit and the release just so that we can uh, move those through. The look ahead, if we get that, just so that it's got, the look ahead basically will work it out a little bit in advance so that it can, so it can prepare itself for what's coming. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. This could be something ain't enough. So you can see that's now perfectly opening and closing. We haven't got any spill happening now. So if you listen again to that start. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. This could be something ain't enough. So you can hear when I had that in bypass then that it's... Feeling me, baby, give it up. This could be something ain't enough. Okay, so that's the gate. That's working perfectly fine. So you may think, why are we using a gate? Well, the whole point of that is if we have loads and loads of tracks and they all have noise in between them, we're going to end up with a pretty noisy track. And the way to get tracks sounding the best is so that you haven't got loads of random noise happening all the way through that's going to affect all your different effects and things. So using gates and chopping up all the silences is a really good way to get your mix really clean and tidy. So going on from this, let's now put a little bit of EQ on it because it sounds just a little bit Feeling me, baby. Give it up. I think we could sort of brighten that up a bit. Get rid of some of that sort of noise that's at the bottom of it. So uh, let's just grab an EQ. Uh, we'll just grab standard um, logic stuff. So we now that we've got the channel EQ up, let's just strip some low end out anyway because there's literally not a lot of point in. There's nothing happening in the vocals down there anyway, so we don't want too much. I might want to just lift this section a tad. EQ going a bit, but just bring the Q in a touch. But let's have a listen. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. This could be something ain't enough. So that's quite nice. Uh, what we've done there essentially is um, strip out any sort of woolly horribleness that's happening in the low part of the the vocal so that we're just worrying about Feeling getting that sound. 
nice and full. Let's Give maybe it up. Kind of move it up a little bit more. It's a bit boxy there. This could be something. Ain't enough. Okay, I'll play you the version in and out bypass so you can hear what's happening. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. This could be something. Ain't enough. So there you go. That's just added a little bit more excitement to it at this stage. Now, so after we've added some EQ, what I want to do is now compress that up a little bit. So let's just grab a logic compressor. Are oh, we dynamics? Compressor stereo. So these are all standard. Now with this, if you haven't watched my um, compressor video, watch that. That'll be linked above. Now I'm just going to do a sort of standard four to one on the vocal, which is always quite nice. Um, no makeup gain. Now all I'm going to do is change the threshold to grab that. And what I want to do is just let a bit of the vocal through with the attack and then just hold the release a little bit longer. So let's just listen how that plays and then we'll get the threshold moving a bit so we can grab it. So. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. This could be something. Ain't enough. So what we're trying to do with the compressor really is to try and get a bit more presence in the vocal to get that kind of really pulling together. And that's why I did the little cut before on the EQ, because as soon as you start compressing, if you're compressing and, you, and you've got all the noise at the bottom, the compressor's going to drag all that horrible noise at the bottom of the vocal, and then you're going to end up with it sounding really kind of woolly and horrible. So what I'm doing is that's why I'm EQing before the compressor, just to bring out exactly the EQ that I'm doing and just to really get that vocal sounding a lot stronger. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. This could be something ain't enough. So you can hear that makes the vocal sound a lot thicker, which is great. So that will do for that. So that's 4.1 there, remember. Nice bit of release. So we're holding on to that vocal for a little bit, a little bit of the thickness. So what we've done is a lot of the fixing up before we now get into the kind of making it sound uh, sexy. So we've uh, we've put a gate on it to get rid of all of the noise that's happening. I've EQ'd out a little bit of the wooliness from the low end so that when I go into a compressor to make it thicker and fuller, then it's actually just dealing with the vocal bit that I want to deal with rather than any kind of hum and stuff that's on the vocal mic and in the room anyway. So now we've kind of cleaned it up, so to speak. It's uh, Let's put another bit of EQ on there so that we can you know, get it sounding a little bit prettier. And that's after the compressor. So let's go for something tuby because then we can get a little bit more colour in the sound and a little bit more, so it sounds a little bit more gorgeous. So let's go to the Vintage EQ collection and then let's go to the Tube EQ stereo. Now this is a Pool Tech uh, EQ sort of style so this is going to give us a more kind of vintage -y sound, a little bit of sort of the old school analogy sound. So this will add a little bit of noise again but it's good noise at this stage. So yeah Bees this is going to make it sound lusher. Down. Now there's still a little bit of noise on there, so this is probably where I would chop the vocal into a little bit and I would probably um, fade that out. So just keep that in mind when you are doing this, as I said at the start, you know, this is, gates aren't perfect, but gates kind of do get you out of jail quite a lot of the time, <laughs> literally. But you... Um, He's falling down. But that's great. That's given us a nice uh, feel on there. So now it's sounding nice and vintagey and warm and we've got all the compressors and gates happening nicely on there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add some effects to it. So so now I want to set get an effect up. So what I want to do is I want to send this to a bus. Now the reason I have a bus send on here to do my reverbs is because if you have it on every single channel, I want to be able to control these channels independent of the reverb. And to have the reverbs on a bus, I don't want to use loads and loads of reverbs across each channel because if I do, uh, CPU usage will go through the roof. And also, I don't want to use too many different types of reverbs, so I might send some other things like backing vocals or or whatever else to this reverb so that I know that I'm not just filling the, everything up with loads of reverbs. It gets really messy sounding and a bit too busy. So just having it sort of a couple of buses with different types of reverbs on is a much better way to go. Sorry to intrude. 
but make sure that you hit the like button, you know, that big thumb down the bottom, make sure you hit that because that really helps me out, It'll do me a favour, it means that I can do more of these videos so that you can get more nonsense out of my brain every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell, but make sure you hit the thumb button. Right, let's go back in. So if you're enjoying this video so far today, make sure that you smash the like button and make sure that you subscribe, uh, press the bell, because I do these videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday and you don't want to miss out on these epic mixing and mastering tips. So smash the like button now, that means it'll get in front of other people and it'll really help me out, so thanks for doing that. Right, where were we? So let's select a reverb, uh, Chroma reverb in stereo. Okay, so this is quite nice, let's just get a a preset up on this. Let's go to rooms and then let's go vocal room. Let's keep this as basic as we can. So on this reverb, I think it sounds good at around 3.2 on the decay. Now the decay time is, is the length it holds on for. So let's, um, let's send a little bit of this to it and see what it sounds like. Feeling me, baby. Probably a bit Give too it much. Up. This could be something enough okay that's very nice so what i want to do here also is you can on this take away a bit of eq of the reverb itself i want to take the low end out of this and then i'll probably take a little bit of the tops out too so it's not this is just on the reverb remember so this is just taking out uh the sort of the dirty nasty lower end stuff of the reverb this is just to make the whole track sort of will keep it sounding clearer throughout and then not having it so it's a really bright reverb so let's listen how that sounds feeling me baby give it up this could be something so it just keeps the presence on the vocal a little bit as well see be Yeah, so that's quite nice. Not too reverb, we don't want it too sort of splashy, but it's giving the reverb in the right places, not too bright, it's not too dark. So uh, that's a good way to do that. So now I want to put a bit of delay on here. Let's uh, do the same again. So let's send this to bus two so that we can um, use the buses in the way they're supposed to be used so that we're not just slamming everything onto the track. Okay, so now we're here, let's just name these up. Uh, that is Rev. 3.2 deck for uh, decay and let's just name this one uh, delay for the moment so we know exactly where we are let's uh, grab the a delay from here so uh, delays there we go and uh, what we want is just a standard stereo delay. So on this delay is a good one to do. We're just going to do it on quarter notes, the standard presets. Let's have a listen to see what that's doing. Could be something. What we're going to do, we're just going to put just, just let's put some cuts in here as well, so that um, it's only dealing with exactly where we want it to do around the vocals. That's the left delay. Let's get the uh, right delay doing a similar thing. See. Be around. Okay, it's probably going on a little bit too long, so let's just uh, bring these feedbacks down. So this is the amount of it that you have. So let's now play again. Be something. Ain't enough. Leaves falling down. Quite fancy having a bit more reverb, not too much. See. So there you go. I think that sounds Feeling pretty me, nice. Baby. Give it up. This could be something. Okay, and then as another little bonus tip, what we can do is then send this delay bus back into the reverb bus, which is uh, pretty cool. So let's send that back to the reverb. And then we're adding a little Could be bit. Something. Ain't enough. Leaves falling down. So I want to match up this um, 
delay reverb to be the same as the normal vocal. That's why we're spinning it back there. So if we've got 28 on there, let's bang 28 on there so that we can uh, get it sounding quite similar. Be something Maybe turn it to Leaves falling down See be around. And there you have it. That's exactly what we've done. So now we've uh, done all of those little tricks that I've taught you. Now let's listen to the before and after and you'll hear exactly how that vocal sounds uh, wet and dry. Feeling me, baby. Give it up. And now let's listen to the dry this version. This could be something. Ain't enough. Leaves falling down. So you can see that's a fair difference there. See be around. So if you have got vocals like this and you're trying to get them to sit perfectly in the mix, the next video coming up is absolutely perfect. It is how you can get any vocal to sit in any mix so it sits perfectly every single time. It's a great one-off trick. So make sure you check that out. That's coming up right now. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. See ya. Thank you.